Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome once again to Walking Through Your Walking Through the Word Ministry, brought to you by Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where Thurman Cunningham Sr. is our pastor. My name is Tyrone Cunningham, and welcome once again. Uh, we're still in divine, or we're actually about to end the divine deliverance series. Uh, we've uh, ventured through Genesis for some time now, and that was that was our desire to find out about the people that uh, were in Genesis and those people, those families, those brothers, those fathers and mothers and have their interactions and learn from the things that they did. The things that they did wrong, we learned from the things that they did right. Hopefully we learn from them also. But we're coming to the end of this Divine Deliverance series. And uh, last week, the patriarch Jacob had died. The patriarch Jacob lay, was laid to rest and he ultimately gave instructions to his son. Right. He told them certain things that they could look forward to and things that he expected of them and the things that God had given him to give to them. Yeah. He shared with them and he gave up the ghost at the end. Right. That was chapter 49 and we're moving into chapter 50, the very last chapter in Genesis. The very last chapter in Genesis. And we're saying goodbye to Genesis, but we'll, we'll say hello to some, o some other things that we'll enjoy. Right. Genesis chapter 50 uh, is where we are. And we'll do the chapter in its entirety. Genesis, the chapter is 50. And I'll start reading with verse 1. And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. He loved his father. He loved his father dearly, and so many times when we go through this bereavement process, this grieving process, that sometimes people don't grieve in the same way. Yes. Some people say that it doesn't take that much, or, you know, if you're saved, then you shouldn't carry on in such a way that that father, that mother, that sister, that brother, that friend of yours will be with Christ, and someday you'll see him, but when a person has been with you for a long period of time, right. it's just like an old tree with the roots that are buried deep into the ground. Right. When they fall or when they're pulled up, they tear up the soil, they tear up the earth, and it makes a, a difference in your life when that person leaves. Yeah. If you love that person and you uh, have been, uh, just you have to remember that here, Joseph had been separated from his father for yeah. a while. Joseph had just become reacquainted with his father 17 years prior to his death. And he loved his father as his father loved him. So he fell around his neck. If you can see him now, remember, Jacob had given up the ghost. He had folded up his feet. He had laid in bed and he had given up the ghost. And now Joseph is grieving from his father. Right. Says here in 2. And Joseph commanded his servant, the physicians, to embalm his father. And the physicians embalmed Israel. Three. And forty days were fulfilled for him. For so was fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him three score and ten days. Now you talking about some mourning. You said that that that, that, that young lady who saw her mother laying up here or her father laying up here or her husband or a wife laying up here and she just throws her head, he just throws his, his body on the casket mm -hmm. and won't let go. Yeah, yeah. But that's for a few minutes. Yeah. That's for maybe an hour. <clears throat> that's maybe for an, a week that they go through. These people have mourned or will mourn this Patriarch Jacob for three score and ten days, mm -hmm. seventy days, a morning, mm -hmm. yeah. crying and weeping and wailing and, and and making 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 noises that that indicates that you're in sorrow. Right. And remember, he's not even one of them. Mm -hmm. He's not an Egyptian. All right. He's a Hebrew. He's been integrated into this society, but they apparently had grown uh, attached to him, and they mourned because their friend, yes. Joseph, mourned mm. for 70 days. <clears throat> for and when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph 
spake unto his house, unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of the Pharaoh, saying, Five, my father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die in my grave, which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan. There shalt thou bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. Now, remember that Joseph is the lieutenant <coughs> governor of Egypt at this point. He's second in command. He's, he's, he's vice president. He's the person that makes calls and the, and the Pharaoh listens to him, but he has the respect yeah, yeah. for the Pharaoh that he feels the need that he needs to ask the Pharaoh yeah. to leave. Yeah. He feels a, a, a respect for the Pharaoh that he feels as though he needs to ask him to leave and to go bury his father. Remember, his father told him. He said it at first before the last, before he had actually uh, transpired, before he actually transitioned, excuse me. He told Jacob, he told Joseph, brother, do not bury me in this place. All right. Don't bury me in this place. He didn't want to be buried among the Egyptians. Right. He wanted to be buried in the place in which his grandfather had purchased. Yeah, yeah. Melchipola. All right. Where Abraham had purchased. Yeah. Where his father was buried. Where his mother was buried, where all of his ancestors were buried. He wanted to go to that place to be buried. And he made Joseph swear. Yeah. And Joseph is living up to his word. It says here in 6, And Pharaoh said, Go, go up and bury their father, thy father, according as he made thee swear. Now, I'm going to go back up a little bit. He told the Egyptians to embalm. Yeah. Well, they say that the Egyptians were the worth probably one of the best embalmers that they ever lived. Because you can dig up mummification, you can dig, dig up mummies now that have been embalmed by the Egyptians and you can still see some of their features thousands and thousands of years later. You would have to have embalmed him so that he would be preserved because you mourn for him 70 days before you taking him to be buried. Yeah. Imagine the stench if you didn't do it right. Imagine you know the petri the, uh, the putrefaction of the body, the, the you know the decay mm -hmm. of the body. Seventy days yeah. he's laid out, so he's got him ready. He's got him prepared. He's asked the Pharaoh, "Can he go?" And the Pharaoh has told him, "Yes, you can." It says in seven, and Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt. Eight, and all the house of Joseph and his brother and his father's house, only their little ones and their flocks and their herds, they left in the land of Goshen. Remember, they had settled in the land of Goshen. Yeah, yeah. Now, apparently, this particular parade of people, remember, all the elders of Egypt, this is a grandiose Sending off ceremony. Right. Going home ceremony. Yeah. Everybody is playing a part. Mm -hmm. The last time, the last time one of them was escorted from Egypt was Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he was escorted because he had lied uh -huh. to the Pharaoh. Uh -huh. yeah. And Pharaoh escorted him to make sure that he was gone. Yeah. He was unwanted. Yeah. But now the ancestor of Abraham is being escorted. Uh, after he has transitioned with this royal send off, all the elders of, of Egypt and everybody that held some type of position and everybody that was important in Egypt was escorting him out of Egypt and his family. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a great send off. Right. This is a man that deserved it because Jacob had basically done marvelous things. He had done things that wasn't so good, but then over a period of time, he got it right. Yes, sir. And God had blessed him to live to be a, a ripe old age. Yes, sir. And all the respect and admiration that he was getting from these Egyptians was deserving. Yes. He was deserving of it. Right. And his son that loved him, I'm pretty sure would have made his father proud if he could see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says here in 9, and they went. It says here in 9, and there went up with him 
both chariots and horsemen, and was a very great company. Jacob came in in a way because he was a humble man. He's leaving with chariots surrounding him. A police escort, if you would, out of Egypt. Going out of this place where people really didn't particularly want to go because they were full of idolatry and a whole lot of other things that were going on there. But he was leaving escorted by dignitaries and police and mm. soldiers and the whole nine yards. If you can see them all set in a array and right. Jacob in the front. All right. If you could, just, just envision it. It says here in 10. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan, and there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven additional days. Once they got to where it was that they were going and passed over a particular place, then they mourned with a great and terrible mourning. I've heard pastors say that some back in the day, you know, you hear, mm -hmm. you know, they be mourning and humming, you know, moaning, really moaning their death. I mean, this person is gone and they, they're, they're moaning a terrible and, and, and solemn and sad moan that only, that only that type of, that only that type of hurt can bring on. You may not ever, may not ever hear moan again. But those times when they moan, you know that somebody departed that they love. And this is what they're doing here. Joseph loved his father, Jacob. And apparently all of these people were mourning with him. And when the inhabitants of the land of the Canaanites saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, this is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians. Wherefore the name of it was called Amberazarim, which is beyond Jordan. All right. Everybody that heard it, yes. everybody that witnessed it, knew that somebody great had left. Yeah. Yes. Somebody, I mean, I and I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it. But you got to understand. That I think that we've gotten to a point in our Christianity, our religiosity, that we don't want people to cry when their parents or when their loved ones die. Uh, we've got to a point where we got to keep our composure. Uh, mm. Where we have to keep our composure in such a way that we dignify it. And, and, and that we don't want to but we don't want to belittle ourselves and make uh, make a mockery of ourselves because we're crying because somebody that we love is gone. Same, same. We've gotten to a point in our, and like I said, in our walk with Christ that apparently God doesn't want us to mourn our dead anymore. We give them home going. We dance and we praise the Lord and this ain't no, you know, we, we, and we, I mean, just everything to get our minds off it, but our loved one has gone. Say, say, say. Never to return again. Yeah. It's not like when it's not like when Joseph left and his brothers had sold him off into slavery. He had hope of seeing his father again. Yeah. It talked about him mourning then, it talked about him crying then, it talked about him wailing then. But his father is gone for certain from now on. I think that sometimes we can be so pious, yeah. religious, right. that we don't let our natural emotions show. See, right. see. That we don't go through the grieving process and it causes us problems later on. Yes, yes. Psychologically, you're supposed to mourn. It's natural oh, yeah. to grieve someone who's gone. Of course they're going to heaven. Of course you'll see them one day, but you won't see them on this side of the river ever again. So I think we may need to lighten up on these people that grieve. I think we may need to lighten up on these people that want to cry for their loved one. Right. And let them cry. Let them holler if they want to. Yeah. Don't turn the casket over people. You know at the end of the day, <laughs> let them cry. Yes. Let them moan. If, 
is a natural process. It's a part of it. It's a part of it. I think we need to rethink it. I, I don't think God, I, I really don't think God don't want us to cry about it. It says in 12, and his son did unto him according as, the, as he commanded them. His son, 13, for his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with the field, with the field for a possession for a burying place of Ephraim, the, the Hittite, before Mammon. It says here in 14, and Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren and all that went with him to bury his father after he had buried his father. We buried our father. All right. We loved our dad. Yeah. We saw him off. We talked to him before he left. Mm -hmm. He told us what our plot, what our stay would be. He told us what our future would be. He told us what he saw in us. He told us that he loved us. He told us all these things. And now we are brethren and all those things that happened in the past. Then the past. Our father, he, we've honored him by burying him. The, the, the Egyptians have gone as far as mourning for him. And everything that should have happened throughout the chronology of time has happened. Natural grieving process. We've taken it. We've done, we've done all that. We've done everything we should have done. And our father asked us not to bury him in Egypt. And we brought him down. And us as brothers and all the company that was with us, we are now back at home. Yeah, yeah. After we've done. And should be feeling pretty good about yourself. Mm -hmm. Should be feeling all right. Things should be mended. Yeah, yeah. All the things that transpired before now should not even be brought up again because our dad has died and we've all come into one agreement that we loved him and we sat around the bedside and we watched the ghost leave him and now our loving father is gone and we should just embrace one another. See. That's what we should do. Yeah. Let's see. That's what we should do. <laughs> 16. Fifteen, rather. And when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will per adventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. These heavy conscience won't leave them alone. Apparently, they didn't listen to that song of Johnny. Hey. <laughs> You know, Johnny said, I made a deal with my conscience. If my conscience didn't bother me, I wasn't going to bother my conscience. But their conscience is still worm. If at least 17 years later, because remember, they lived in Egypt and Joseph and Jacob entertained each other and enjoyed each other's company for 17 years in Egypt. So it's been at least 17 years. But it's been a lot longer than that. Yeah. Joseph has told these guys, these Simeons and these Levites and these Gads and these Ashes and these Zebulons and all, and all of them, he's told them that all is forgotten. Remember, he told them that in Egypt when he hugged them. He said, I'm worried about what happened. I'm here because of God put me here, not because of you. But their conscience will not leave them alone. John said, he'll be. <laughs> Y'all have heard the song. Word them all night long. Y'all not do that. You shouldn't have done that. There is reprisal in some type of uh, some type of requite that, that that's gonna come. There is no way that he forgot all those years in Egypt. There's no way that he forgot all that mistreatment that he had to withstand and that he had to endure before he left. There's no way that he'll forget that we put him in a pit. There's no way that he'll forget that we talked around the pit about killing him. There'll be no way in the world that he'll forget that we sold him to our cousins, the Ismaelites. 
and all that befell him while he was there. There's no way. He's just saving us because he didn't want to bring his daddy in. I'm trying to paint the picture. Because daddy told him not to mess with him. But now dad out the way. Mm, let's go on to 16. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, They sent somebody. They didn't go themselves. They didn't all been to the, as the, old, as the, as the, as the old folks said, to the field. They didn't all been to the field. They get up. Walking and talking and crying and waving and gnashing teeth. Yeah. Seventy days. Yeah. They mourned them before they left. Seven more days after they got to where they were going. All that time and daddy, and 17 years daddy was living in Egypt. Him and his son talking every day. Some commentators say, man, I said, and I said, ain't no way in the world he wouldn't have told Joseph while he was living to not mess with them all. But they concocted <laughs> lie yeah. after they died the day. They somewhere in Goshen. Joseph is taking care of his business in Egypt yeah. in the court. Yeah. And they're out in the woods kind of tending sheep and tending cattle and devising a plan to save their own skin. Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine. People are off time carried away by their own yeah. guilt yeah. their conscience. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody trying to get you, man. Yeah. I ain't even thinking about you. You're the last thing on my mind. All right. But every time I see you, you put your guards up. Yeah. Because you think that I'm trying my best to pick my time, divide my time, so I can get you back. Yeah. You know what you did. But that conscience is doing more to you than I could ever do. That conscience is worrying you and tearing you up on the inside. And I'm smiling all day long and sleeping all night. And you stand up all night long and say here. They sent somebody. Messenger. Say, Daddy said, before he died. What did he say? Seventeen. So shall he. So shall ye say unto Joseph. This is what the daddy told them to tell Joseph. And his messenger. He told the messenger that daddy told us to tell him before he died. <laughs> you tell him, tell that, tell this, tell them that. And this is what daddy said. Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brother. And their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, Forgive the trespass of the servant of God, of the God, of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. He wept because he was sorrowful. Because they still didn't trust him after all the kindness he had shown. After everything that he had done for them, after he had brought them in, after he had nursed them and their children, after he had told them that it was all for God, after everything that was done, they had to come to him and then they put God in it. They said, tell him that not only are we the servants, not only are we his brothers, but we're the servants of his daddy, God. Mm -hmm. And say to God and our father, yeah. We serve the same God that our daddy served. You can't do nothing to us because we serve the same God as dad. Says in 18, and his brethren also went and fell down before his face. They came and they said, behold, we be thy servants. 19, and Joseph said unto them, fear not, for I am, am I in the place of God? Romans 12 and 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. I ain't got to put my hands on. All right. I don't have to touch it. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 15, So then, seeing that none render evil for evil unto any man, for but ever follow that which is good, both among yourself and to all men. You don't have to get them back. Amen. 
You don't have to take seek out vengeance. Amen. Because vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and the Lord is much able, he is more able, excuse me, to take care of that situation than you ever could. Amen. He can handle it in such a way and does handle it in such a way that it's done when he's through with it. Yeah. It's over. You may have to worry about reprisal. You may have to worry about a counterattack. You may have to worry about them seeking vengeance on you after you taking out retribution on them. But when God does it, it's over. It's finished. You can go to sleep at night. You can rest because God is taking care of you. They ain't come and they throw themselves down. We are serving. Joseph is said 19, uh, fear not for I am I in the place of God. I can't take away what's in your heart All at this right. point. All right. I can't forgive you past what I've already done. Right. That that's in your heart, that that's in your conscience, you got to go to God for that. All right. All right. Only God can take away the stain. Yeah. Yeah. Only God can take away the guilt. Right. Only God can take away that that you're feeling. So if you've done this, whomever I'm talking to, Whomever I'm speaking to, if you're walking around with a guilty conscience, you'll never live your life to the fullest of potential. You'll never live your life to the fullest that God wants you to live it because you are always looking for somebody to touch you on your shoulder and say, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Give it to God. If you apologize to that person, yeah. which is all you can do, yeah. give it to God. See, see. Lord, I've done my part. Lord, I have sincerely repented of that that I did, and I asked them to forgive me, but they didn't look like they really forgave me. All right. But let it go, let because it go. you've done what you can do. Yes, sir. And all you can do now is say, Lord, bless them and help them to know that I don't have any evil intentions towards them. All right. At all. Period. And Joseph said, I'm not God. 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me. This is what I've been waiting on this whole uh, book. Yeah. From when we started out in 12, this is what I've been waiting on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Says here in 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. This divine deliverance. All right, all right. This divine deliverance. Yeah. He had to go through hell and back yeah. to do what God had already prophesied or given him indication that he would do. That he would do, but he didn't give him all of the particulars. Yeah. God don't always give you all the particulars. God don't always give you every... He doesn't give you the manuscript. Right. He doesn't give you the, the, the step by step what you'll have to go through to get to the point where you can do exactly what he said that you would do. Yeah, yeah. Joseph had no idea that he'd have to go through prison, through Potiphar, through all the things that he had gone through so that he could make this full circle in yeah. chapter 50 right. and do exactly what God intended for him to do when he had that dream about the stars and the moon. Oh, yeah. Bowing down to him. Look who bowed down to him now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look who bowed down to him. Look who down, knee body, the, the knee bent and body body. Say it, say it. He said it, that it would happen. God told him it would happen. He didn't know that they bowed down to him three times prior to this. Yeah. When he was in Egypt, they bowed down to him. They didn't know who they were bowing to. But now they're full, they know full well who they're bowing down to. And they bowed down just like God said they would. 21. Now therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you. And your little one, and he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. 22. And Joseph dwelt in, in uh, Egypt. He and his father's house, and Joseph lived in a hundred, lived a hundred and ten years. 23. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children, Ephraim's children of the third generation. He saw his great great grandchildren. All right. The children of Machai and the son of Manasseh. And was brought up unto Joseph's knee. All right. 
All these were adopted. All these were, were just like his children. They weren't his grandchildren because they received the heritage. And inheritance, we're going to find all that out. Oh, we got a big, we got a journey. We got a, we got a journey. I am excited about it. Joseph said you meant it from a bad, but God meant it for my good. How many times have God turned our bad thing into good? Right. Told somebody that day at work, I say, don't worry about how they treat you, brother. I say, don't worry about it because they're only putting you where God needs you to be. Yeah. It seems like, doesn't seem like it right now, but just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. They're going to unknowingly put you where God wants you. Yeah. Where you're going to be more prosperous than you ever thought you would be. Yeah. Yeah. On this particular place where we are. It says here, Joseph said unto his brother, I die and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph in 25 took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. 26, so Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt, but he wasn't taken out of Egypt right then. All right. It was X amount of years later, when they were making their departure, after all these things had taken place. It says here in Genesis 15 and 13. And this is what they have to look forward to. This was given to Abraham. And he said unto Abraham. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land. This is where they are right now. That is not theirs. This is where they are right now. And shall serve them. And they shall afflict them for 400 years. This is where they are right now. They're not being afflicted yet. 14, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I, will I judge. Afterwards shall they come out with great substance. All this hadn't transpired. All this hadn't come to pass yet. All this hadn't come to fruition at this point. But in Hebrew 11 and 22 it says, but by faith Joseph when he died made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bond. All of these things are intermingled. All these things are going to build up and going to continually get more and more interesting because now we know where all these people come from that we'll be reading about. Yes, sir. We know where everyone that we'll read about from hence now until we get to the end of the Bible, which is my plan, if I live, right. Lord, say the same, and we, and we still keep the same company, and I'm able and healthy, I pray that I do, that everybody that we'll read about came from these people that we just got through studying about these months. And it's going to get more and more exciting. These men have decreased, but guess what? Their children are going to increase. And the thing that I just said is going to take place. All of this affliction and all these things, that was prophetic. But guess what? We're going to experience it. We're going to experience it as though it's in the present. Oh, yeah. all right. We're going to paint the pictures. We're going to see the people. We're going to hear them talk. We're going to hear them come to life. We're going to hear everything that they have to say to us and the things that they talk about. Because they're going to continually reflect back on these people, these men. They're not going to forget their heritage. They're going, to not, they're not going to forget where they came from, and we're going to walk the walk with them. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go through every path. We're going to go through every palace. We're going to go through every valley. We're going to go through every trial, every tribulation, every triumph, every victory that they have. We're going to go through it all together. It's going to start next week. But you're going to have to come back. It's going to start next week. All those things that I just talked about, it's going to start next week. Because right. we're moving on to Exodus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've left Genesis. All right. All right. We're going to step over into Exodus. Right. We're going to see how those waters feel. Yes, sir. We're going to see whether they're too hot for us, too cold for us. Whether it's just right. right. Or it's going to be good. It's going to be good. But as we always say, you're going to have to come back here to find out exactly what's going on over in Egypt. Right. After all these men have gone. 
Come back. Come back. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. I hope you are. Seems like everybody here is excited about it. I can't hardly wait either. Let's pray about it. Lord, we thank you right now. Lord, we thank you for, Lord, our journey through Genesis. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you guided us straight, that you've given us some understanding and some insight into those things that were going on with these patriarchs that we'll talk about throughout the Bible, that we'll be able that interesting things will happen to their lineage. Those people that come out of them, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that these people will show us how to do certain things that we may not know how to do. They're going to teach us things that we may not know. They're going to give us understanding in the situation that we may not have understanding in. And Lord, you're going to guide. Lord, you're going to order our steps. And Lord, I pray that you order my words and my thoughts that Lord. I can, Lord, paint the picture every week. Yeah. That I may be able to show what it is that they're going, what's going on with these people. And that we may be able to, Lord, partake of all of their adventures and be a part of it. That we may live it as they live it. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all that's going on. Thank we you. ask in Jesus' name, Lord, we have our uh, brother Banks who transitioned over the week, Lord. He's touched our hearts in different ways. Yes, Lord. Yes, He's, Lord, Lord Jesus, blessed us with his smile, Lord, throughout the years, Lord. And, and Lord, is somebody that we'll miss. Yes, we'll Lord. miss, Lord Jesus, greatly. Yes. We pray for his family, Lord. We pray for strength. Lord, we pray that you, Lord, strengthen them and let them know, Lord Jesus, as they, as they go through, that earth truly has no sorrow, that, that heaven can't heal. Yeah. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name to be with us, Lord, as we leave and continually bless us, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray, Lord, give you all the honor, give you all the glory for you deserve it. Amen. And thank God. And as always, respect yourself and peace.